democratic election. The U.S. was appalled by the outcome. Uh, the victor was a populist priest, Aristide, whose support had come from a lively civil society that had developed in the slums and the hills that nobody was paying any attention to, just poor people. And the idea that they would elect their own president was outrageous. Uh, the U.S. at once moved to try to undermine the democratic government, withdrew aid, transferred aid to opposition elements. Before Aristide had even entered the race, the U.S. government had put millions of dollars behind the campaign of a former World Bank official, Mark Bazin. Despite this support, on December 16, 1990, Jean-Bertrand Aristide became the first democratically elected president of Haiti, with a staggering 67% of the vote. It was a boldly voiced mandate. But while the Haitian people rejoiced, Aristide's opponents, both in Haiti and within the U.S. government, began to explore more palatable options. When the United States picked Mark Bazin to be the candidate, he comes a little scraggly guy who's talking about union rights, who's talking about, you know, even education of the Haitian people. And because he was able to bring them together so well, I mean, within three months of being a candidate, I said, won the election with a huge plurality, the U.S. was extremely terrified of the potential for Aristide. Aristide's talk of union rights and higher minimum wages in Haiti put at stake for the U.S. business community 20,000 assembly line jobs, contracted at less than 50 cents a day by corporations like Disney and Walmart, sweatshop labor formerly protected by the island's heavily armed elites and political instability. The forces that were at work were long-standing um, supporters of the old regime in Haiti, particularly the old military regime, but also the, some of the Haitian elites. There were support for those elites in the, in the old regime in the U.S. Congress. Once we have election, where we will not have weapons, bloodshed, but on an equal basis, human beings freely choosing people they want to lead them, then we would feed our democratic process. Then we would break with the tradition of moving from one coup d'etat to another coup d'etat, but moving from one democratic election to another one. That was the goal. Aristide represented a threat to them because Aristide was the voice of the 85% of the country who had never been heard. If that can happen in Haiti, then it could happen in Colombia, and it's obviously happened in Venezuela, it can happen in Peru, and, and so on down the line. And they do not want those kind of popular democracies because they believe that they will confront U.S. economic interests. In 1990, Haiti had the first free, fair, democratic elections when I became president. Seven months later, a coup happened. At that time, Bush's father was the president of the United States. The 1991 coup was carried out by the Haitian army, whose leadership was trained by the CIA and at the Fort Benning Infantry School in the United States. Although Aristide was restored to office by President Clinton in 1994, he had only a year left in his term. When René Preval won the elections that followed, Aristide became the first Haitian president ever to peacefully hand over power to another elected leader. After regaining the presidency in the 2000 elections, Aristide was forced out of office for the second time in early 2004. Today, he sees a clear connection between the two coups. In 2004, a kidnapping happened. They kidnapped me, which is also a coup. 
and Bush son is the president. Somehow, something can be linked to find the reason that happened twice. So I think they wanted to continue what they started in 1991 through the first coup. Hold on a second. Hold on for a second, please. President Aristide uh, resigned. Uh, he has left his country. Uh, the Constitution of Haiti is working. There is an interim president, uh, as per the Constitution, uh, in place. Uh, I have uh, ordered the deployment of Marines as the leading element of an interim international force to help bring uh, order and stability to Haiti. I have done so uh, in working with the international community. This government believes it is essential that Haiti have a hopeful future. Uh, this is the beginning of a new chapter in the country's history. I would urge the people of Haiti to reject violence, to give this uh, break from the past a chance to work, and the United States is prepared to help. Thank you. Again, the world watched as Haiti descended into violence and chaos. But this time, the circumstances surrounding Aristide's departure are far less certain. One area of uncertainty is the morning of February 29th, when Aristide left Haiti. It is known that he departed on a U.S. military jet and that he was kept unaware of his eventual destination. After more than 20 hours in the air, he was deposited in the Central African Republic, a nation the United States has no diplomatic ties with. Ira Kurzban, who served as general counsel to Aristide's administration, elaborates. When he wouldn't turn over the uh, resignation letter, uh, they threatened to uh, uh, let the plane fly out and leave him there uh, at the airport stranded without any security at all. This was the ultimate gun to uh, someone's head. They used intimidation, coercion, and then after they got him on the plane, basically kidnapped them and refused to tell them where they were going, refused to allow them to even look out the windows. U.S. officials in both Washington and Haiti were quick to respond. The idea that someone was abducted is just totally inconsistent with everything I heard or saw or uh, am aware of. He was not kidnapped. We did not force him onto the airplane. He went onto the airplane willingly, uh, and that's the truth. We didn't request his departure. You went yesterday to the palace at night? No, I did not. Uh, we're we're the the you did not. the U.S. push no, President easy. Aristide out of power? President Aristide... Mm -hmm made a decision for the good of Haiti, and I think... Roger Noriega, the current Assistant Secretary of State for the Western Hemisphere, echoed his colleagues' denials. We did conclude, uh, because of his failure to take advantage of opportunities over the years, uh, that he probably wasn't going to be able to govern uh, the country. But uh, uh, in the final analysis, decision for him to leave was a decision that he made. And although the U.S. State Department presented to the world what effectively amounts to a letter of resignation, even some members of Congress are skeptical. In March of 2004, congressional hearings were held in Washington to investigate the ongoing crisis in Haiti and the role played by the U.S. government in Aristide's removal. Among those testifying were Timothy Carney, a former U.S. ambassador to Haiti, and Orlando Marville, 
a senator from Barbados who has monitored Haitian elections for the Organization of American States, the OAS. Both now serve on the board of the Haiti Democracy Project, the most powerful anti aristide lobby in Washington. Many for calling these hearings. Let me take advantage of the ambassadors that are here and, and uh, ask them, uh, what does coup d'etat mean as relates to uh, American understanding of the international understanding of that French term, coup d'etat? Ambassador Connie, I'm going to ask Ambassador Marvel as well, but since both of you are professional diplomats, what does it mean to you? Uh, a, a blow against the state, if you will, the forcible uh, seizure of power. Uh, and there are any number of ways to perpetrate one. There was a book, in fact, done in the mid-60s by uh, Edward Lutwak. That's good for me, though. Entitled Coup d'etat. Uh, I concur with that. It's a forcible takeover of power, but uh, that's an old definition. And uh, I think one is moving towards the definition of a, a takeover by force, a uh, subtle takeover, a soft coup, okay. a hard coup, and so on. Let's take an academic thing. From what we know, from what Secretary Noriega said, what does not make this a coup d'etat as ambassadors understand it? Rebels, force, fear, flee. <laughs> when we interviewed both diplomats, they again stopped short of calling Aristide's departure a coup. But they underscored the U.S. decision to facilitate his removal. As you appreciate, Aristide had an American guard, not Haitian. And he asked the guards if they were prepared to stand up and fight to the end. And they said no. As I gather, he went to the US Embassy and asked if they would do something about it. And they said no. I think if you, if you look at Haiti and Aristide and the United States, you are inescapably led to the logic that the international community, those who care about Haiti, looked at Aristide and found him inadequate. Yet some of those who Carney describes as dissatisfied with Aristide's presidency have been more than just bystanders to Haiti's political wars. The Washington-based Haiti Democracy Project, which Carney now chairs, is largely funded by the Boulos family, a Haitian conglomerate that owns several media outlets constantly used to lambaste President Aristide. The group of 184, another anti-Aristide organization, is also headed by an American, Andy Aped, the president of Alpha Industries, one of the oldest and largest assembly factories in Haiti. The leader of the opposition, financially supported by the United States, is an American citizen, Andy Aped, who owns sweatshops in Haiti, and he opposed the rise of the minimum wage when President Aristide said the minimum wage has to be raised from 38 cents a day to a dollar a day. But are these interests significant enough to topple the government? Well, they were significant enough to have a coup in 1991 when President Aristide was first there and, and obviously the U.S. military helped. So the answer is yes, I think they are significant enough in the United States government's view. The United States does not want popular democracy in the Western Hemisphere. Popular democracy meaning people who are democratically elected who want to represent the vast majority of people within their country. That's the fight with Chavez, that was the fight with Allende, that was the fight with Michael Manley in Jamaica, and that's the fight with Aristide. Except Haiti is a much poorer country, much easier to topple, much easier to uh, have uh, a coup there. This is not a about uh, anything but the ideology of the far right wing that now really controls the United States government that does not support popular democracy. They don't believe in it. They believe in working with the elites in these countries and using the military or using intelligence sources in these countries to keep control. In other words, we simply do not accept challenges to our authority and prestige. Uh, if they occur, we're entitled to use violence or terror or uh, strangulation and so on. In this region, the, and in fact, by now, you know, in the world, the U.S. is to reign supreme. Actually, in Haiti, what we have is a real genocide. 
the huge majority of the people as Lavalas, 